Welcome to MindShift, I'm Brandon. Today is episode five of a series that I call When Christians Respond. And that's where I take the most common arguments that I get in the comment section from Christians and try to do my best to answer them once and for all. So I have something to point back to as I continue to receive the onslaught. So far we've covered, who are you to judge God? Oh, you're just cherry picking. Don't you know that God's ways are higher or he's too mysterious? And do you think you're the first person that's ever covered this? So we've handled those four and today we're doing, you sound hurt who hurt you. And this one actually comes in a few different forms, and we're going to cover all of those forms today. But before we do, I want to say a quick thanks. This beautiful new piece behind me was gifted to me by an iconoclist tier patron named Martin Haroldson. If you can't see it too closely, it's got gears in the brain. It is representing MindShift. I love it. In fact, I'm thinking about replacing my logo. I love my current logo, but there is one tiny problem with it that gets pointed out sometimes, and it does drive me nuts. I've just been afraid to commit to something new. So let me know what you think of this piece. For those of you who love the Sisyphus, don't worry. It's right here. I know you can't see it, but it actually works better here because it mirrors my Prometheus poster just on the other side. You'll see those and everything else when we get to the studio tour, and nothing is permanent. I'm still playing with what's going to go where, but I digress. Thank you again, Martin. I really love it. Without further ado, let's dive into today's video. So the thing about this comment and the others that I've covered so far is they seem to be done in a place of defensiveness. They seem to be done as a last resort. I'll actually take it as a compliment that the case I present against whatever issue I'm covering in my videos is so strong that the only thing left to do is say something like, you sound hurt. That's not to say that no Christians give me good feedback or correct me on some context issue or anything like that, but I would say a good 80% of the comments or more that I get from Christians fall into the categories I've covered so far or others that I have planned for the future of this series. And they almost always have nothing to do with what I've actually covered in my videos. In fact, on this particular point, I thought it would be fun to look at just a small piece of data, and that is, which of the videos have I covered that have even been emotionally charged in general, or where the point I'm trying to make is coming from a place of emotion. So far, I've put out 153 videos in the last nine months, not counting shorts. So that's 153 long format videos between 20 and 40 minutes on average, covering particular arguments for God or against God, covering particular Bible verses, Bible stories, or Bible books, reacting to very specific claims that Christians are making in their apologetic videos, and on and on and on. And out of those 153, four videos have been something that I consider maybe more personal. Those would be my deconversion story, my prophecy story, a more poetic piece about the last beautiful thought I had about God, and then the 25 books that led me to atheism. And in those videos, sure, I do share some of my personal journey more, and that does include, I'm sure, some level of hurt or disgust or regret about things that happened in my life as a Christian. And I'm sure that a small percentage of the people that make this claim, oh, you just sound really hurt, are maybe really truly being sympathetic or empathizing with what I have shared. Because I do share personal things in these other 149 videos. I understand that. But by no means is it ever my actual case against Christianity. It might be anecdotal, and I usually try to call out, hey, this is just my personal experience, but here's what I've seen. And when I'm making a particular argument or I'm making a particular case, yes, I might include some of that as a slight amount of ammo because this religion does affect people personally, but it is never the crux of my argument. And so when I get that back as the main defense, it just shows me that there wasn't anything else to say. So again, I'll take it as a compliment. And also, why would it be a bad thing? Let's talk about that for a second. If my entire argument against Christianity was something like, Christianity hurt me, and therefore it can't be true, yes, you should take issue with that. If my entire case was, oh, this God is bad, I hate him, yes, call that out. But I don't hate this God, and I don't hate Christians. I don't believe in this God, so there's no God to hate. I talk about God quite a bit in the hypothetical sense as I can try to relate to the arguments coming from Christians, but of course I don't believe in this God. And if you sense in my passion or my anger or my sadness some level of hurt, it is with Christianity. It is with the religion itself and the effect that it has on real people. This is something else. Maybe I should consider it the sixth episode. I have covered, if you don't believe in God, why do you talk about him so much? By the way, all of these videos will be linked in today's description because that's something else that I hear 
an insane amount of, and it's really not that hard to comprehend. We live in a time and place, me specifically in America here, where this religion is predominant and it affects people's lives on a daily basis. It affects policy, it affects interactions, it affects judgments, it affects relationships and friendships and society at large and individuals. And not just for myself, but for the empathy of my fellow citizens, I care about a false religion with all of this harm or potential harm and baggage and the real world effects that it has. That is so different than I'm angry with God. And I hope that most of you are able to make those connections and see that nuance. But again, let's say that I'm really hurt by my Christian past. Does that detract from my arguments? Does it make me so biased that I can't possibly speak truth? Have I been so corrupted by my hurt that I come across unfair? I really don't believe so. And it's something I do try to check myself on. And even before making this video, I thought, is there validity to this that I should maybe utilize this episode to address? And though I have covered my issues on a personal level with Christianity, I don't think that it has subtracted from all of the cases I have made against it. I think it has been a miniature part of my argument at large. And when I was thinking about if this is correct and if there's a place for emotion as we do this, a, my biggest goal on the channel is to help those who are in the process of deconstructing or deconverting or who have already done such and are still dealing with some fallout. And I think one of the best ways I can do that is by actually helping people relate. I was in this religion for 30 years. There were benefits for sure, but there were also cons and potential harms had I continued in it. And me being a real person and sharing those real experiences, I think can bridge the gap because people can see that I've been there. I'm not just talking hypothetically about the Christian lifestyle. I've seen it firsthand. And now let me back it up with some sources. Now let me back it up by what Christians are actually saying and claiming. Now let me back it up by what these Bible verses are and the incorrect way that they're used and the lack of context that Christians utilize them in and the bad arguments and bad apologetics, etc. So again, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it kind of as a court case. And if you were trying to prove something in court, you would need a lot of facts, you would need a lot of evidence, you would need a lot of data. But sometimes personal testimony filters in. It can't be the entire thing, right? That just doesn't work. You can't just get on the stand and say, I am so mad at so-and-so, so they deserve jail. You can say, I'm really mad and hurt by so-and-so because they did X, Y, and Z. Here's how I know they did X, Y, and Z. Here's some more evidence of X, Y, and Z. Here's them claiming they did X, Y, and Z. And here's their friends saying, yep, they did X, Y, and Z, right? It's part of a larger case. So if you ever hear from me that it's just an emotional or negative emotional response to a religion that I personally don't like, and that's why I don't think it's true, and that's why I think it's harmful, we're in some dicey territory. So you let me know if I do that or if I have done it and I'll try to be genuinely open to it. So let's talk about some of these variations of how it comes. So the first one we covered pretty well. You sound hurt, who hurt you? And I think we know why this person says these kinds of things. And hopefully I have explained why it's okay, but also the balance to be struck. But the second one is something along the lines of, oh, you've just been hurt by the church. And you could extrapolate that to mean organized religion in general. Well, God is real. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. The words in the Bible are true. But you've just had a really negative experience with your particular church or with the aspect of organized religion. And there's even variations of this. I'm going to try not to get too far down any rabbit hole. Is it possible that this religion could indeed be true and there could be some bad apples, whether it's individuals or organizations at large that misrepresent it and thus my criticisms would be in vain. That's absolutely possible. Let's say there was an objective way to say that some band plays perfect music. Well, if I get the wrong speakers that are blown out and they're not giving me the actual proper sound, I'm going to be making a bad judgment on that band or that song because of how it's getting to me. So I understand that 100%. And this is what a lot of people try to do when I tell them that I was brought up in a very fundamentalist form of Christianity. Oh, Brandon, you were in the cult side of Christianity. You were just hurt 
because those people have it wrong. Don't you know we have it right? And then insert anything else, a progressive Christian speaking, a Catholic speaking, a Mormon speaking, a different sect of even fundamentalist Christianity. Oh, well, yeah, if you just understood Calvinism, Brandon, you wouldn't actually have a problem with that, right? Like every excuse in the book from every different kind of Christian pointing at what they believe I got wrong or those Christians got wrong. And okay, Again, like my speaker analogy could be, but I've talked about this a vast amount of times. The very fact that so many different denominations exist in general and that none of them can agree with each other, even though they all have access to relatively the same source material, and more importantly, all of them supposedly believe they have access to the witness of the Holy Spirit who will give them knowledge when they pray for it. How can all of these different groups of elders, the anointed ones by God, meet in all their various churches just a mile apart from each other? Pray to God and seek God for wisdom when writing their church mission statement or their statement of belief and have such different takes. And you can try to just say, oh, it's not that different. They agree on most things. They agree on the big things. They agree on salvation issues. No, they don't. No, they don't. And no, they don't. And that's not my problem. That's a problem for this hypothetical God. And also, there's no merit to it because I've been through a succession of different churches, even in my adult life, as I moved further away from this fundamentalist form of Christianity. I've been exposed to many concepts of this religion. So it's not just one church or one sect of Christianity or anything like that that left this lasting impact. Yes, I talk about my childhood sometimes, like that prophecy video, and it sounds pretty darn wild to a lot of you Christians even, but it doesn't sound wild to about 40% of American Christians. If I were to talk about my childhood fears of demonic possession, many Christians would be like, what are you talking about? But a lot of fundamentalists, and funny enough, a lot of Catholics would be like, yep, that's spiritual warfare. Got to watch out for it. And so I think the point I want to make with this variation is that no matter what I say or from which part of my experience I draw, as I was in this belief for over three decades, some Christian is going to tell me that it's exactly because of that that I have a problem with this religion. The irony and the hypocrisy, the lack of self-awareness to see that they're just in some other one, that all the other Christians are going to disagree. And if I came from their church, someone would be telling me I was hurt because I went there. When all believers of Christ, when everyone who has been touched by the Holy Spirit can agree on the right and final version of Christianity, correct church, correct interpretation, I will give it my absolute best shot. I will not hold on to anything of the past. But what am I to do? Live a thousand lives and go through each different denomination and expectation and variation of Christianity so that I can have a fair and unbiased and non-emotional response to the issues with Christianity? It's insane. So anyways, let's move on to the next variation. And this is, well, you must have been hurt by an individual. Was it your mom? Was it your dad because he left the faith? That's a big one that I see in the comments a lot for anyone that saw my deconversion video. When we moved back to the States after being missionaries, my parents split up and my dad, for all intents and purposes, according to Christians, backslid. Oh, that just messed with your young psyche. Or, oh, your mom was too fanatic. Or, oh, she was too progressive, which is hilarious. Which is it? Were we too fundamentalist or were we too progressive because she was a missions director as a woman, a teacher, a leader in the church? Again, when you're me and you see all of it coming at you from so many different angles and people taking the exact piece of data of something I shared in a video and telling me from different Christian angles why that's the thing that messed me up, it is actually hilarious. Oh, maybe you were abused. Did something happen in your childhood? Oh, it was that crazy missionary who made that prophecy over you. Again, people acting like they know my life. And again, I've shared a lot. But to think you have a clear picture on my 30 years in this from a few sound bites is arrogant to the nth degree. And I think how I'll end this video is actually talking about my summation of my Christian experience, the pros and the cons. So stick around for that if you want. I'm not sure how much I'll talk about or how in the weeds we will get, but I think that might be a good thing to do in this particular video. I think what's really funny here is if I bring up something like how, I don't know, omnipotence doesn't really work when you compare it with omniscience, right? This is a philosophical argument. In what world would me, even if I had been hurt by an individual in the church, 
play a part in that argument. I make arguments that are philosophical. I make arguments that are scriptural, that have nothing to do with anything other than the text itself. I have arguments that are historical, thus issues with the validity of the Bible and things of this nature. I have arguments that are scientific, etc. Like I have many arguments that I put forward or a mixture of arguments that I put forward that in no way, even if I had the worst church experience, even if I was completely devastated by a bad apple, an individual, it would play no part in the validity of those arguments that I have put forward. So I think that's something that's like really important to step back and understand first before I try to justify how these things aren't the case, or even if they were the case, don't matter as much as one might think. I had this one written down and I realized we've covered it, which is I've just been hurt by the wrong version of Christianity. I think there is a difference between I've just been hurt by the church and I've just been hurt by a different version of Christianity. But both of them kind of draw off the same thing, that there's so many different takes on this, that whether it is a particular church and how they perceive to treat their members or what their expectations are, that might be more of the you've been hurt by the church, infighting, membership issues, leadership issues, etc. That's going to be more with the church. And then the issues with a particular denomination of Christianity is going to be, oh, well, those people believe something insane. Of course, that was going to make you think this wasn't true. Or, oh, those people are typically too judgy. Yeah, that's going to be a negative thing that's going to drive you away. Or, oh, they're too black and white. And so they've set you up that if you can't accept the whole truth, you can't accept anything. We talked about that in that deconstruction video I did. So I think there are some nuances and some differences there. So I still wanted to include it. And then I guess the last one that I would say, the last variation or form I get of this is, You've just been hurt by your improper interpretation of the Bible. Sometimes it's as simple as saying, I'm reading the wrong translation. The real truth is found only in this version, which is an insane claim. Sometimes it's, well, Brandon, you can't possibly begin to understand the Bible because you don't speak the original three languages, which is also an insane claim to be made. We'll talk about why those claims are so silly in a future video. My favorite one of this is you can't know what you're talking about because you're not a Christian. Therefore, you don't have the Holy Spirit helping you understand the Bible. So you can't understand the Bible and thus you can't critique the Bible. I guess at least they're trying to make some tie in with me being hurt by my bad interpretation of the Bible with a lot of my arguments which are against the validity of the Bible or things that the Bible says that are so mutually exclusive and or contradictory, but on and on and on. It's my fault. I'm hurt because I don't understand the Bible correctly. So I think it's saying something that, yeah, if it actually said that, Brandon, it would hurt, but it doesn't say that. And you can't even know that because another one, you've been deceived by the devil, so you can't understand scripture properly. All of those on their own are their own evidence or partial evidence toward the validity issues with this religion, with this Bible. For instance, that last one, you've been deceived by the devil, so you're not reading the Bible correctly. I made an entire video about what the Bible says about being deceived, but I didn't do so off of my hurt of potentially having been deceived. I did it based off what the scriptures say about the ability to be deceived and why that's a problem. So again, long story short, don't want to make excuses for everything, but when I see this, maybe it's just a good time for me to let Christians know it has never been beneficial. It has never made me pause and say, oh shoot, my entire argument is now invalid because I guess I was a little emotional or passionate or hurt or angry in that last video. My being a human and having human emotions has so little to do with the main gripes I have with this religion. And honestly, a lot of it has been me understanding better after I left the faith and losing my belief in free will, or at least in the version of free will that we typically think of, that I'm not mad at these people. I don't blame my parents for indoctrinating me. I'm not mad at the pastors who believed the wrong thing. I'm not mad at the missionary who made that prophecy over me. I understand why they did it. I understand that just like I believe for so long and was lucky to have a certain set of events happen to me, certain knowledge get in front of me, have the right brain chemistry to think through these things, etc. By no strength of my own did my deconversion happen. And by no fault of their own, and I really believe this even if it doesn't seem that way as we talk about it, because that's the thing about free will, you almost have to act as if it's there. And it's a conversation for another time. And again, this doesn't make me better than anyone, but it does make me chuckle when someone tells me I'm so hurt 
because unlike a lot of people who do place blame on their parents for indoctrinating them, it's like you deconverted at 50. Why are you mad at your parents? If you had had children, you would have done the same thing or you did have children and did the same thing. We are all just stuck in this causal chain that is so far outside of our control. And that understanding has helped me tremendously personally with sympathy and empathy even for Christians, even for the Christians in my life that I think did harm me. And hopefully, if anyone is still watching at this point, this can be a major takeaway for you as well. If you're hurt, and I see it so often in the comments because some of you straight up tell me, I'm so sad, I'm so lost, I'm so hurt, I feel like my life was stolen from me, I've wasted all this time, money, or energy, I get it. Oh my gosh. I could have retired by now if I got all my tithes and offerings back. So I get it, and I have those same feelings, but they're not going to do you any good. They're not beneficial. And if you were able to believe this, of course the person who also led you to believe in this did. And most of the time, and I'm not making excuses, especially for people that have been in very abusive situations, but most of the time, these people really believe these things. If you really, really believed in the concept of hell, would you not be kind of insane in making sure that that your loved ones didn't go to hell. This is a conversation for another day, but when people are like, oh, the idea of hell is child abuse, I agree that it is abusive to a child to learn these concepts. But a loving parent who actually believes in this stuff and is therefore teaching it to their child to keep them out of hell, that's not child abuse. That's love. It's just wrong. Now, there are ways that people manipulate. There are ways that people abuse, that they use the power of this, even if they don't believe in it, to control, to create fear, to get the kind of lifestyle they want. People can be downright predatory with this religion, and I am not making any excuses. Where is the cutoff where you feel sympathy and empathy, and you even recognize why they're doing the things they're doing before you still have to say, well, it's not right and it's not fair, and they're going to have to be rehabilitated or separated to protect the next generation of children from going through the same thing. There's an understanding up to a point, and then you do have to take some form of responsibility. But that responsibility, in my mind, shouldn't be vengeful. That's one of the biggest differences with the Christian God and people that have this empathetic understanding but still desire responsibility and fairness. I would never want to punish those people because I hate them and they're gross and they're so nasty and they're so terrible. No, it's because we're trying to help them and help their future victims not become victims. It should be from a place of empathy, sympathy and love and caring. If it's from a place of vengeance, it's just more evil in a different form, in a different fashion. So I say all of that to say that I approach Christians like this. Christians who hurt people are probably people that were hurt themselves or people that believe because someone else helped them believe. And yes, at some point we need to intervene. That's why I have this channel speaking out against this religion. But I don't hate Christians and I'm not mad at the ones that have been in my life. So we've gone in a lot of circles and I have covered some of my personal experiences, but let me just check with myself. Have I been hurt by Christianity? Yes. And so if you want to point that out to me over and over and over and over again, go ahead. But it won't change my arguments. It won't take away from the contradictions in the Bible. It won't take away from the philosophical, scientific, historical issues with this religion. All you're doing is stating that there is harm that can come from this religion. And I've been a part of that harm. Again, I have lost time. I have lost opportunity. I think about the directions I was pushed in, whether it was ministry or being able to support ministry, etc., with career choices and school choices up against what I'm actually interested in and what I might have pursued otherwise. And hindsight is always 2020. Maybe I wouldn't have done anything different. But I do often think, man, I'm so interested in counseling and psychology and philosophy and neuroscience. I wish I would have used the money and time and energy that I had before I had a family, before I had larger commitments and responsibility to pursue that instead of the road that I ended up going down. And if I hadn't been indoctrinated, it's possible I would have made different decisions. The opposite is also true. Even through the harm, there's been amazing things that have come from being a member of this religion. I was in a really tight-knit private school. It was a small group of us that were together through like two years of preschool, kindergarten, and all the way up to eighth grade. And then even though we went to a public high school, many of us stuck together. And then I was back at a private Bible college. Despite the beliefs, the fact that I was involved in such a close community for such a large amount of my formative years 
allowed me to have a lot of stable security. Again, this isn't to say you can't have it in secular societies, but I do need to also recognize the benefits that have come with this. But have I been harmed? Have I been judged? Especially after I left, have I seen the hate that can come from Christians? Because honestly, I don't think it's as much hate as it is fear. Brandon knew his stuff. Brandon really believed. Brandon had great faith. Brandon has a Christian wife and was raising his kids Christian. If it can happen to him, yikes. And the defensive walls come up and they want to cut the influence off. I understand that. Doesn't mean I'm not hurt by it, but I don't really blame them. They're protecting what they think is near, dear, and important. And they have placed a very high value on their faith. Completely understandable. Doesn't make it right. And I'm sure if we sat here long enough, I could come up with so many more very specific instances, purity culture being one of them. What a horrendous hurdle to overcome. Purity culture in the fundamental evangelical space of the 90s wasn't just for girls. There is some horror that goes on with the boys as well. Even the harm that I've caused because of this religion, the differences that I perceived in people or the bigotry that I've had towards certain groups in my past. And it wasn't because I was hating them. I didn't hate them for any reason other than I was told they were incorrect, and it was sin. And I convinced myself I hated the sin and not the sinner. And I think that's such a horrible concept. And I'm regretful, and I've been hurt by that. As I think about it, all of the things that I now associate as hurt were things that I ended up doing as a Christian myself. And I'm sure so many of you can relate to that who have deconstructed and deconverted. You look back and you cringe at the things you used to say the proselytizing you used to do, the judgment that you had for others in their lifestyles, the self-righteousness or vindictiveness that can come, the tactics, the insincerity that are just there. And so many of you might be saying, oh, wow, Brandon sounds like he was horrible. And you might be a Christian that doesn't realize how much you've done this until you've had a chance to really look at it with objective glasses. This is what I mean. I believe that built into the foundation of this religion, inherent with the principles of which it ascribes, is the at least likelihood or the potential for harm, if not the absolute inheritance of harm. You can take the most fluffy, rainbow, lovey-dovey, Jesus is my best friend, I'm just here to love and serve version of Christianity, and you can still find why that's harmful, why it's incorrect. Don't even get me started on hell. If we really want to talk about where I was probably the most hurt within Christianity, it was the concept of hell, not just for myself, but then even when I felt secure about my salvation and my eternity, the people in my life that I knew that didn't believe or believing that I was potentially deceived because I actually read my Bible and I knew that was a possibility. So maybe I'm going to hell. The shame and the guilt and the fear, those are three things that absolutely took over different portions of my life as I was in the religion. And once again, I can already hear it. If you were a true Christian, if you were really born again, if you were really living in the spirit, if you really knew you were saved, if you really understood God's grace, you wouldn't have felt those things, not to the degree that you did. That just shows your misunderstanding of it. And fine, believe whatever you want. But I believed as much as anyone can believe. I thought I heard the spirit as much as anyone has thought they've heard the spirit. I thought I felt it. I believed it with every last fiber and ounce of my being. I based my entire life around it. I worked at it. I studied. I desired. I loved and I obeyed. And the irony of ironies is that it was that level of care and attention that made it eventually impossible not to see how wrong it all really was. So in summary, to end, was I hurt by Christianity? You betcha. Do I think most people who have been a Christian for any amount of time at all have probably been hurt, even if they haven't quite realized it yet, or to what extent or degree? I do. And here's the funny part. Even if this religion actually did more good than it did bad, it doesn't make it true. Even if this religion never harmed one person, it doesn't make it true. And to be philosophically consistent with that, that also means that if one person is hurt or many people are hurt, it doesn't make it false. And that has never been my claim. I never once have said because it is harmful, 
it is untrue. I say, I know it's untrue because of X, Y, and Z. And in addition, because of the harm that it can and often does produce, we shouldn't continue to propagate it. We should fight against it. We should point out the errors. Those are two very different things. How the religion is wrong is how I know that it's not true. The harm that it can induce is why I think channels like mine and others are necessary. I hope that you guys can truly understand the difference. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I, again, really hope this didn't sound as defensive as it's sounding in my head right now. And it was supposed to be a quicker Saturday video. I don't think it ended up being that. Maybe I'll move this to the Sunday video. Maybe if it is out Saturday, you'll still get a Sunday video. We'll see how it all unfolds. But either way, until next time, keep thinking. I wanted to personally thank my top tiers of support, my Iconoclast and GVI, Jacob, Joe, Martin, Oliver, Perry, Rocket, and Sean, my humanist heroes, Jared and Christy, my atheist advocates, Caleb, Jeffrey, Karen, Sparky, and Todd, as well as all of my secular scholar patrons. If you believe in the mission of this channel or you just enjoy the content, please consider joining these fine people. Thanks and have a great day.